Hi friends! Welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Caitlin and I like to film eyeshadow palette ranking and review videos as well as the occasional other content sprinkled in. So if you like indie makeup, if you like eyeshadow palettes, if you like me, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button because I post two videos every single week. And for those of you that are not new here, my face is happy that you are seeing it again. And I am excited for today's video. As you can see by the title, we are ranking every eyeshadow palette that I tried in the year 2024 and um yeah i mean it's every eyeshadow palette that i tried some palettes i purchased at the end of 2023 and possibly used them like that last week um after i had filmed my ranking all of the palettes of 2023 so these are all the palettes that didn't make that video from 2023 i think there's five of them and then the rest of this are all palettes that i've purchased in 2024 and had a chance to use. So there will be 33 palettes total. If you're new to my rankings, then you should know that I like to rank in categories. So I go through four different categories. First category is palettes that are meh. And um, if you hear panting in the background, I'm a masochist and choosing to film this on 4th of July as fireworks are going off and um, yeah my dogs are freaking out and also the fireworks have woken my baby up uh, twice now so fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again because otherwise my neighbors and I are gonna have a problem so anyways not sure where I was oh four categories first category are palettes that I feel meh about uh, then it's palettes that I like palettes that I love and holy grail favorites anyways I will have all of my affiliate codes and in the description box down below. I don't think with 33 palettes I'll be able to link every single one, so I'm probably going to be annoying and only link the ones that I do have an affiliate link with, but I will, if I have any dedicated videos with any of these palettes, I will prioritize linking those down below. So if I do have those, then when you click those links, that should have links to the palette. So it's two or i'll have the palette name down in the description box not in the order of the ranking so don't go down there for spoilers they won't be down there but i will have um yeah what did i what was i just saying oh the palette names in the description box so you can just like plop that into google and go get them but anyways let's go ahead and get on into it edit this video and if my dog's panting is like so loud I probably won't post it I'm really hoping you can't hear it that well because she's like down on the ground but so we have one dog that's like super freaked out by fireworks and he's staying with my aunt and uncle that are um they live in like a kind of like a retirement like community area um and so nobody sets off fireworks there so it's super quiet and he is like terrified of fireworks like like any loud sound and if he hears fireworks like like because we had some last night so he would be like on edge all day today and then hearing all of these today he would just be like it it would he would just be not having a good time let me just put it that way but anyways he's not here and now for some reason he's not here i don't know if my other two dogs normally put up a brave face for him but now they're freaking out. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So I don't number count down my palettes. Um, so I'm sorry if that's what you're looking for, but the palettes, even though they're in categories, they are still ranked from like least liked to most liked. Uh, so you can still count the order, but anyways, there's 33 total. You can count it down at home. Hopefully I counted correctly. Anyways, first up in the meh category and the meh category means palettes that like, if anything happened to them, I would not care. I wouldn't be sad about it. I'd be like, eh, well, win some, lose some, goodbye. So first up, we have the Byredo Mineral Scapes palette. I have talked about this palette a lot. It is a luxury palette, and I was actually just watching Rachel's ranking video where she talked about how luxury makeup is supposed to be different, and so it's not supposed to perform the same on the lids. And while I totally get that, it's just not my vibe. And I don't, I don't know if I have luxury makeup. I don't think I have any other luxury palettes. I think this was my first experience with a luxury makeup. So it's just not for me. Some of the shimmers that perform like satins, like they're okay. I have, I feel like I have better satins. Like I have satins from Viseart that I like more than these. And then I have um, like the shimmers. 
I don't know they were all just fine like it was all just like okay and for the price that this palette is I'm like you got to be better than okay in my opinion and like yeah the packaging's nice but I don't know I just did not feel like that palette was worth it at all I really wish I didn't buy it and yeah I'm just like super disappointed in it next up we have the Sigma Beauty Cool Neutrals palette and Funnily enough, I was watching Rachel's and I was like, <laughs> she has it ranked much higher than I do. But anyways, I, and I'll link Rachel's video down below since I've mentioned it a couple times and we're only two palettes in. Anyways, it's fine. <laughs> this palette's fine. You know, like the mattes, I don't think they're that great compared to other mattes I have in my collection. I don't think these are anything amazing. I do think the shimmers are nice. These shimmers, if I use them as like a one and done shade, much prettier than the Byredo ones, which is why it's a spot higher. But like the overall color story, I'm like, it's all right. Although I will say I really love the shade Thunder um, and I do like the shade Iris. It's, it's nice. I do, I think the shimmers are really pretty. I just feel like the mattes left me something to be desired. So it's just not, it's just not my favorite. Next up we have the Natasha Denona Golden Palette this is a palette so like the first two palettes i don't think i'd recommend to anybody like the by Bredo mineral skips like i'm sure there's i know there's people actually because i've talked a lot of crap about the by Bredo palette and there's people that have commented saying they think it's beautiful so if you think that's beautiful i love that for you i am so glad that you spent your money on something and you enjoy it i'm just salty over here because i don't like it but anyways this palette i would say swatch it in person see it on your skin tone and then decide if you want it because for me I saw swatches I thought these golds looked like they had some nuance to them like there was like a champagne gold a rose gold a yellow gold like I thought there would be different shades of gold they all look yellow gold on me every single one of them pulls yellow gold on me so for me not a great palette could be good for other people though so i do say like i do think the quality is nice it's the normal natasha denona quality so if you like that and then you swatch it and you think it looks pretty or those are shades you'd gravitate towards i think you'd really enjoy that palette it's just not m not my favorite next up we have the viseart petit for praline a piece palette and this palette is really pretty performs great it's just a quad that I feel like I already have from Viseart, so that's why it's in this category because I'm like, if something happened to this and it left, like I have these shades in other Viseart palettes, so I, I'd be okay. But I do really like the quality of this one. I don't have any issues with it. And I think it's a really great palette um, for traveling, uh, or quad for traveling especially. One, because it's small, but two, it's really easy to, to do neutral looks with it and just have a nice easy look you know next up we have palettes that i like so to differentiate this from the last category these are all palettes that i like i feel like they have a place in my collection and i overall enjoy them so there we go so i like them but they're not quite loves and so there's all there's something like maybe a little bit nitpicky or just something that doesn't work for me so first up, we have the Viseart Petit Four in Hesperides, I think is how you say that. Um, my dogs ate it. I uh, love the color story on this one. I actually do really like this uh, duochrome shade up here. I think it's really pretty and I like the tones of it. I liked the look I got with it and I like that it uh, can survive your dog chewing on it. I will say my dogs love to eat the cardboard cartons. Like if I'm doing a review and I leave like the cardboard like you know outer carton like on my vanity they love to chew it up and I think my dog buddy <laughs> thought that this was just the carton and so he bit it and then realized it wasn't and so I think he was like uh oh and got scared but anyways he realized it, the error of his ways next up we have the collab between Odin's Eye and Judy this is the spring dragon palette and I think these are very pretty pastels but I don't love an all pastel look and when I used the shades to like this shade to deepen up a look or try to complete a look I just didn't really like it and I do think the shade dew and moss are 
I said the shade, but the two shades Dew and Moss are really, really pretty shimmers. I think this has a great formula. It's just not a great color story for me. I did mention wanting to combine these new uh, Legendary Diversa palettes with their, you know, predecessors. So I might still do that because I do think these pastels would look really nice with the neutrals in her first palette. So I need to do that. But anyways, next up we have the Viseart Petit 4 in Isolde. And I just really loved this, these tones on me. Like the these tones on my skin tone were just so lovely. This satin shade up here is truly such a gorgeous one and done. And that's where I don't like that Byredo palette because I can use this kind of a shade and have that you know, luxury, high-end, like just sophisticated eye look that's very minimal with this palette. And I just think it looks better than the Byredo one. So I really like this. I think it's great. Next up, we have the Viseart Petit 4 in Tyrion. And I love this one. This is a topper shade over here. It's so, so pretty. Um, and I really like that even though this is a quad, you can get quite a bit of variety with it because you have such a stark contrast between the mattes and also the shimmers. So you could do like a smoky look, you could do a lighter look, you can do a glam look. Like I just feel like there's a lot of variety that exists in such a tiny package. Plus I love purple, so you know. <laughs> And also, just to clarify, like, I'm not a quad girly, that's why all of the petite fours are lower. Quads just aren't my favorite, but I do really like the Viseart quads, and the reason I keep getting them and collecting them, even though they're not my favorite and I kind of consistently rank them lower, it's because I like to be able to pull the shades to create my own color story in some of the bigger Viseart palettes, so just to clarify. Although these are different, these are the same size as the Aton Dews, right? Yes same pan size as the Aton do, so that's what I like to do. Anyways, next up we have the next up we have the Trixie Cosmetics and Juno Birch collab palette. I think this is pretty. I just honestly haven't reached for it or like felt inclined to do like a lot of looks with it. I did one look, I think it was with the purples, and I struggled a little bit, so that just made me nervous to do anything with the blues or any of the other shades, and I just haven't wanted to like grab for it again. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. It felt wrong because I've only used it, I think, twice. It felt wrong to put it as like meh because I haven't really fully given my thoughts to it but I honestly don't know what, what to do with it. It honestly probably should have been lower than these other palettes now that I'm thinking about it but I really like the color story of it. Oh you know what? That's what it was. So the purples not great but these neutrals I really like the tones of these. That's what put it up higher. I had to remember. I was like why did I rank this higher? Anyways next up I think this is pronounced Divarune Cosmetics. This is their Gloomy Gardens palette. And I've done a couple looks with it and I've ranked, every time I rank this, I say this, but I really need to figure out if I still have the Celestial Garden palette because they're supposed to be sister palettes. And I think that would be my jam if I could combine them. There's nothing wrong with this palette. It's just not one that I keep grabbing for. I don't know. I, it's like I look at the color story and I kind of struggle with like what to do besides monochromatic looks and I don't want to do monochromatic looks. Like I want to do something more fun. So that's that's where I struggle with that one. Next up we have the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions 2 palette. I really love this shade right here, Blue Haze. It is a gorgeous shimmer. Stunning. And I really like the matte color story in here. I think it's a really pretty like kind of purple uh, gradient, I guess is the word I'm trying to look for. Anyways, I think it's super pretty. Some of these shimmers are a little bit too similar and I know it's a monochromatic palette, but I feel like we could have had like one like really light, like iridescent purple or even like, you know, those shimmer shades where it's like, looks like nothing, but it's like this iridescent, like blue purple when the light hits it like that in this palette would have been 12 out of 10 amazing. So I feel like it could have been better. I still like it though. I think it's pretty. I also love purple eyeshadow, so here we are. Next up, we have the Wicked Widow Beauty Lovesick palette. I couldn't remember the name. So this is the palette. I think this is really pretty. I thought there would be more variation to this, but when I did my looks, they all leaned pretty purple. So 
it is more of like a purpley monochromatic palette, but you got a couple pinks in it, so I put it above the melt palette because it's slightly better. I also think that you have more contrast in it, so it's better if you were wanting a monochromatic purple palette, this one's slightly less than monochromatic. This one's full-blown monochromatic, so there you go. <laughs> those are my thoughts on those. Next up, we have the Gourmand Girls collab with Steph's Beauty Stash. This is the Nueva Vida palette, and I think this palette is really pretty. The neons perform really well, and I think the shimmers are beautiful. This palette actually arrived to my house. Um, I think it was the day before I went into labor, and so I didn't use this until I came back from the hospital, and I was in, like, you know, the haze of having a baby, and so I just felt like I had a hard time figuring out looks with this color story, and that could have been baby brain. It also could be me and this color story maybe are not super compatible, but whenever I paired any of these neons or any of these shimmers with a neutral palette, the Groundwork Defining Neutrals palette from Danessa Myricks, it was one of my favorite looks. So this much just might be a palette that is like my fun poppy bright colors that I want to pull in palette, but I probably won't don't see myself using this on its own. Next up is the Rick and Morty palette from Glamlight. I heard so many people just rave about this one last year that I was like, all right, I got to get it. And it is it is beautiful. It is a very pretty palette. I have significant staining when I use this. Like really really bad like i had to i washed my face twice and wiped my eye makeup off and still had enough staining the next day that i had to do a purple look because i was gonna do like a light neutral look and i couldn't because it i the pink was coming through from my lids um and it was from using like these shades up here so not great but i really do like this color story i also haven't played with this one nearly as much as i would have liked to but it's a very fun palette um, I think the staining scared me. <laughs> Next up, we have the Viseart Paris Reverie Aton Dew. And I know that this looks boring, you know, if you're a color lover. But the shimmer, their shimmer formula is just so nice when you don't want something super textured. You don't want something super chunky, super flaky. You just want like a nice base or a nice classic look i just think these palettes are so nice and this of the palettes that they've launched so far this year the, this is my favorite color story of mattes i feel like all of the tones look really nice on me i really like the that i can do something like maybe a little more peachy leaning a little more purple i just think this is a really nice palette and listen, like, I, I, I like the gamut, so I just want to give myself some credit with the Byredo palette. Like, I'm, I'm happy, girl, to take some palettes that are, like, less, you know, a less is more approach, but that one and I just are incompatible. Anyways, we have the Odin's Eye and the Fancy Face collab, the Earthwood palette. I really like this color story. I think this is super pretty. I had a great time playing with this one. I love this shimmer here and then the mattes I thought were really pretty and worked really nicely together and this truly does end up being like a, a muted or subdued colorful palette with like pops of neutrals if that makes sense. So I think you can get like a very easy neutral look or you could do something a little bit more colorful or something that's like a little bit of both. And I think it's really nice. Plus this packaging and the packaging on Judy's palette, all of the packaging was like absolutely stunning. Wh whoever the artist was that designed it, amazing. Next up, I have the Mighty Monster palette from Annette and Odin's Eye. I ranked this one higher, probably a little bit because I'm biased because Annette's my friend, but also because you do have these neutrals and I thought this shade Electrum was so beautiful like on the lid by itself. And if you give me a palette that can do like a super fun colorful look, but also like a one and done look, like I just feel like that's you know, that's top tier. Um, I really like the color story of this one. It's a little bit all over the place. I do have to think about what I want to do with it, but I feel like, you know, there's just so many different ways you can take it. So that's what I mean by a little bit all over the place. Like you could do something very warm. You could do something cool. You could do something neutral. You could do something with pops of like color that's neutral. I, you could just do a lot with this and I really like it. Plus, um, orange and purple are it's one of my favorite eyeshadow color combos, so if you give me that, I'm a big fan. Anyways, next up I have the Lunar Beauty Moonshroom palette, and 
I do like this palette. I think the quality of this palette is nice. And I did a look with this palette that I absolutely love. It might be one of my favorite looks that I've done this year, but just compared to other color stories, it's not my favorite. And I just wish there was like a little bit more lighter shimmers in here. Um, I do really like Fairy Wings and Magic Mushroom, which are the two lighter shimmers, but I just would have liked, I don't know if it's because this witch's hat shade is so dark. I don't know. I just want like something else. I don't, it just feels like it's missing something to be like perfect for me, but I do think this is really nice. And if I'm using it like with other palettes, like I have plenty of light shimmers, like I can mix that in. I did enjoy, I did pair it, I think with the highlighter palette and I used like the highlighter on the lid with some of these shades and that I feel like was really pretty. So you can do that as well. But if we're like ranking, racking and stacking palettes, like that is something for me to nitpick. So those were all of the palettes that I like. And the last few were ones that I really, really like, but now we need to move into the palettes that I love. Now we're talking about palettes that I love. And this is so hard. I move these around a few different times. <laughs> Few different times and I'm really not I'm really not confident on this order but anyways we're gonna do the unearthly cosmetics dreamer palette this packaging might be one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen I think this is the only palette so far this year that like on my spreadsheet I've rated as like five out of five on packaging like I truly think this art is like it just is so beautiful whoever did this is so talented but anyways I like the inside of this palette. I just feel like every other palette is like a little bit more special to me. I don't know. I might need to play with this one more. It might be that I just didn't like the looks I did as much. But maybe I should have done something different because these shades look really pretty right now. Like in, like I'm staring at it and I'm like, oh my God, this is stunning. I want to use it again. So it's really pretty, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not confident in this order. Like I said, anyways, next up we have Trixie Cosmetics Horse Girl. I am obsessed with this palette. I think this is so beautiful. The tones of this palette are stunning. These mattes blend together so well, like so well. And I did looks with this that I would, I did looks with this that I would not have thought or expected or whatever. Like, I just really like this. I really, really, really like this. I should say I love this because it's in the love category. I do, I love this palette. Next up is the Unearthly Cosmetics Charmer palette. I think this was the Valentine's Day mystery box palette. Anyways, this is the inside of the palette. I do feel like these two shades are like a little bit too close together for me. I wish there was like just a little bit of a difference. Um, I would have loved like a dark green shimmer or maybe even like, I don't know something like that i'm not sure um but i do really like this palette i think it's beautiful the love the pops of colors i love that it's basically a condensed version of the bad witch club palette from what is their name give me glow cosmetics Whew. all right next up we have a palette that i've only used once because i just got it but i know i already know that i've gone buck wild for palettes for the second half of the year so i needed to rank as many of these for the first half so that i could have as equal of a battle as possible in the second half of the year anyways so first up we have the nude trolls palette and i love this color story i had an absolute blast playing with this palette i think it's beautiful it is such a stunning neutral palette with like pops of multi-chromes like it is absolutely gorgeous um so i cannot wait to play with this more and i really enjoyed the formula in the first look that i did next up we have the cool can't talk next up we have the cool trolls palette i really love this one as a purple lover i love it i do i love it i also i'm, I'm not like a huge blue eyeshadow fan but I think these are really pretty and I really just vibe with a cool tone color story. This, th this ranking between these two is really just based off of the first looks I did. If I'm being honest with myself, I think I'm gonna end up liking this one a little bit better just because I love all the shades in it, whereas I don't see myself pulling for the blues as much, but you never know, I haven't used it that much and I really liked the first look that I did. Next up, we have the What's Up Beauty, is it dragon eye or dragon yeah dragon eye palette i wasn't sure if it was dragon's eye or dragon eye anyways i have played with this palette a couple of times i love the size of it i think it's perfect for traveling and i've said this before well you might not have heard me i've ranked or i filmed my june ranking 
video, but I'm not sure which one I'm gonna put up first. But anyways, it doesn't matter. This palette is like for me as a color lover, my perfect work palette because it's got very wearable muted and I hate the term wearable. You can wear whatever you want, but like very subdued, understated mattes with very sparkly shimmers that like I don't mind being super sparkly at work. I just don't like I wouldn't wear this look to work because it's like a lot of color but I love this kind of a look. It's just not what I would feel personally comfortable wearing to work. Next up, we have the Simply Posh Cosmetics Coastal Palette, and I really love this palette. I think this is great. I really love the tones of these shades. I feel like I can get a nice neutral look with it. I can do something a little bit more fun and, you know, silly and whatever. The shade Serene, I did a one and done look with it. That was really nice. Like I said before, if you can give me a one and done look and you can do a colorful, like that's a, you know, round of applause for that. Next up, we have the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Longing Palette. This is the palette that I have on my eyes today. And I really like this palette. This look that I have on right now might be one of, if not my favorite look that I've done this year. I think the palette is gorgeous. It's really fun. It's definitely like what people would say is a neutral palette for color lovers and a colorful palette for neutral lovers i think it definitely sits in that really fun space so i'm a big fan of it next up we have the ensley rain cold moon palette i was actually gonna rank this lower and then i went back and looked at the looks looked at the looks that i did with this palette and i thought I think I have to rank it higher because I reached for this bad boy a lot and I love every look and I did like one and done looks, I did smoky looks, mm. I did lighter, you know, more looks, like I just, I ran the gamut of looks and I feel like with that versatility and, you know, such pretty shimmers and, you know, an amazing matte formula as well, I think this has to be up higher. So I think what had me wanting to, I've said this before, I don't like the packaging on this. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just not like, I like to read about Faye, but I'm not like a fairy girly, um, on my packaging. So anyways, that's just me. Next up, we have the Nomad Cosmetics New Zealand Stargazing. This is another one that I was going to rank lower because I haven't reached for it in a while, but then I looked back at the looks that I did with it and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I remembered, I, I remembered that when I swatched this, it was like the smoothest, creamiest multi chromes I've ever felt in my life. And I got, again, easy, neutral, like looks that took two seconds like for two shadows whatever i got a very colorful bright look like i just feel like i i did a lot with this palette and it's an interesting color story it's a little bit of a, like a puzzle you know you're like what do i want to do with this but it is very pretty and i think the multi rooms in here are probably like the smoothest that i've ever felt in my life okay last up for the loves category we have the adept cosmetics cyborg choir palette and i really love the shimmer shades in here i think the mattes in here are nice and you can absolutely do complete looks with this palette using these mattes with these shimmers personally i just love reaching in for these shades when i want to spice something up so this shade binary b is actually what i was talking about in that melt cosmetics palette i pulled this shade in for one of my looks using that palette and it looked so nice and that's exactly what i wish was in that palette but anyways i think this palette is beautiful it's great it's great that's it <laughs> i love it it's not in a holy grail favorite because i don't i feel like holy grail favorites are like if i only could have a certain number like if i wasn't like obsessed with makeup and i could only have so many palettes like would i would i have it and i don't I don't know I go back and forth on this one because I'm like probably not but maybe I would <laughs> I'm not sure and I've said this like for the last few months I think in my monthly rankings I've been like I don't know if I should rank this as a holy grail favorite so it's almost there it's just not quite there yet last up are my top four palettes in my holy grail favorites so I consider these my holy grail favorites like I just said okay starting with number four adept cosmetics again these freaking fireworks this is the flying fiddles palette here's the inside this palette is gorgeous i don't know i was like kind of when i first got it i was like oh some of these shimmer shades look sort of boring like i don't know if i'll like this as much when has adept ever done boring shimmers you know what i mean like even though they're like more neutral like 
easier to wear shimmers they are so pretty on the lids and they just this color story is absolutely stunning i actually really want to play with this again now that i'm looking at it like i had a great time with this this is another one where i don't really love the packaging but ugh, the inside of the palette so beautiful oh it's so good next up is i'm just like not sure about this order either but anyways next up is the danessa myricks groundwork 2 blooming romance palette i'm so sorry i have one of my shades flipped so if that's gonna bother any of you as you look at it i apologize but anyways i love this palette i love it almost as much as the defining neutrals the defining neutrals i reach for more um just because i use it to do my brows uh, like a lot <laughs> but this palette i have reached for quite a bit for different blush shades I think it's gorgeous, stunning. I love this like mauve -y, pinky, blushy moment. Gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, there we go. Next up is the Bella Beauté Bar Secret Garden Palette. This one is probably climbing up the ranks faster than anything else, but I love this palette. I do. I love it. I really, really love this color story. I think I've said before, I love pink and green together. This is a palette you can do a neutral look. You can have pops of color in it. I just think it's gorgeous. I really like the shimmers in here. They're definitely that flaky textured formula. So if you don't like that, you might not love this, but I personally really like that formula. So I really like this palette. And last but not least, we have the Ensley Rain Groovy Garden Palette. Is anyone surprised? Let me know in the comments if you were surprised if I rank this one. I love Adore and just everything this palette. Like this is, I don't know if this is my favorite palette of all time, but it might be. Like this is truly my jam. I love these shimmers. I love these mattes. I've said before, you could get rid of the shimmer row and this would still be my favorite palette because this matte color story speaks to my soul. I, I just said I love pinks and greens together. This is the like toned down version of that and I love it and I'm out of frame. But anyways, love this palette. I think it's beautiful. I actually do like the packaging on this one too. Um, I think it's cool. So anyways, those are all 33 palettes that I've tried so far this year. Funny story, my goal was to only purchase... <laughs> 36 to 48 palettes in the year. Now, I did get a lot of these in PR. I had, obviously, you saw that I noted that on the screen and it's noted down below in case you missed it. Um, so I didn't purchase all these, but I think I've still purchased like 28 this year, including July. Anyways, we're not, it's going to be surprising if I stay within 48 at the end of the year. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best, but I don't know, especially because October is usually when I go a little buck wild and I just went actually buck wild. I bought so many C Beauty palettes. Anyways, I'm just talking now. Let me know what your favorite palette of 2024 is so far in the comments down below and I will see you all next time. Bye!